And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at the Master's Trials. This is a game I was very excited about, uh, not just because it has really cool cover, but because it's a sequel to Dice City, also from our Tippian AEG games. Dice City was a game in which you rolled dice and placed them on a board that you had, a city board that you had, and then you would get resources, and then you'd build better buildings to put on that board, which when you rolled dice, so it's kind of a nice growth game. This one changes everything. First of all, the boards are modular, so you're going to have different boards each turn. Secondly, it's a cooperative game where you're all fighting against Mag Magmaroth. This is the Master Trial Wrath of Magmaroth. So you're working together, you're some fantasy characters, and you go in there with cards and dice. Can you win? Here's how it plays. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to build their character of sorts. So this is the Lore Master, who's from the Order of the Everlasting Waterfall, with the Staff of Enlightenment. But, I mean, I could have him be, for example, with the Order of the Scorching Winds, and give him the Sword of Fury. Or maybe it's an Avenger who does all that. Or the Warden, or the Mystic, who has the Order of Scorching Winds. But maybe the Mystic has the Orb of Elements. So there's four of each of the things. There's four orders, there are four weapons, and you're going to just put them in front of you in some sort of combination. Each player is going to get dice that match the five colors shown here, white, yellow, red, blue, and black. You're going to roll these dice at the beginning of the game, and you're going to place these dice on the different spots, on the different columns, depending on what color the dice is. So they would go like this, each die in its row, and then in the column that matches the number that you've rolled. Players are also going to have a deck of cards, and this deck of cards is going to be made up of things that match the three different things that you put together. So you're going to basically go through and look for, for example, if I'm using the Chain of Balance, I'm going to look for icons of this. Order of the Celestial Ties, I look for icons like this. Mystic, I look for cards like that. I go through all the different cards and build my deck from those types. So because I have the Mystic, I would take the cards that match the Mystic, the cards that match the Order of the Celestial Tides, and the cards that match the Chain of Balance, and I'll shuffle these. These are cards that I'm going to be able to, in the course of the game, place on different spots to give me better things for my dice to land upon. There are also some basic generic cards that players will be able to get, like Mastery of Fire and Earth. There's also one of Water and Air, and these will give you two of Mana. And there are then items that you can get, like treasure, that you'll be able to put on the board also. On each player's turn, they're going to be dealing with the dice that are on the board. And so, when you, you're you going to be using your dice, and players will be taking their turns pretty much simultaneously because you're all cooperative. So I can take a dice off something and do whatever it says. So if you take a closer look, you'll see that some of the dice here give you mana. This gives me a blue mana. Some of the dice let you do damage to the enemies. Some of the damage, some of the dice give you some kind of mystic points that you're going to be able to use. They're, they're not an actual token that you get, but something that you can use this turn. And so players are going to be taking dice off to take what's on them. However, taking a die off is not the only thing you can do. You can also remove a die to take another die and move it in one in either direction in its row that it's in so you can get a better item if you have damage over the game you're going to be taking damage which is going to be shutting spots down you can remove a die to get rid of a damage and to heal you can even remove one of your dice and let someone else move one of their dice on their board so have a kind of a teamwork thing now all this is because you're going to be fighting one big mass nasty guy magmaroth and a bunch of his minions the minions are going to be determined at the beginning of the game based on the heroes that you have chosen there will be a minion deck and each round of the game rounds are kept track of here players are going to be going to a location you'll start with the entrance and then you'll go farther depending on how many heroes are in the game, you're going to be drawing a certain number of monster cards from this deck. These monster cards are going to need a certain number of damage dealt to them, or they're going, so this one needs two damage dealt to him, or he's going to do a damage to everybody. If you defeat the monster, whoever does the killing blow is going to get mana of the different types. And again, as I said, there's different mana that can be gotten over the course of the game. 
You want mana for a couple reasons. In front of you, you'll have some face-up cards from your deck, and you'll be able to buy these cards and place them on your board so that you have better things to do. If there's damage on your board when you place a card, it heals the damage too. And so getting these better cards out there is going to help. You also can try to cancel these seals. See, when you get to the end, round, at round 10, there's going to be three rounds there where you're fighting Magmaroth. When you fight Magmaroth, he's 10 health, and you're going to have to fight him like a normal monster. The problem is, this card here gives him an extra 20 health. This here says he does an extra 5 damage, an extra 3 damage, an extra 2 damage. He's not doing just 5 damage to us. He's doing 10, 13, 14, 15 damage to us. So to stop him... I'm going, we're going to have to put mana on these seals to break the seals, because and, and if you do that over the course of the game, the seal will be broken, and then when you get to the final battle with him, you're not going to have to deal with that sort of thing. Even seals can be dangerous, though, because each seal um, that has a certain number of insight, that's that, those, I called them mystic points earlier, but insight is that points you get, you can unlock a seal. When you unlock a seal, you can place these on and, and get rid of it. Otherwise, if the seal's not unlocked, you have to place this much mana at one time. And considering you can only keep one of each mana in reserve from turn to turn, so you, that's pretty bad, so you're going to have to unlock them. Insight is useful for unlocking seals. Insight's also useful, depending on the location, to draw those treasure cards that I told you about that you can and then add to the board and they can do all sorts of really cool things like this one here whenever you are dealt damage uh, dealt by enemies on this row you prevent it so this will stop damage in one of the rows the reason damage is so bad is not only that it shuts down the different spaces on the board where it's at but if anybody has damage on every single spot on their board then everyone loses and this is <laughs> the main way to lose because you're going to be fighting this dude eventually and he's going to be doing a lot of damage so each turn, players are going to use their dice. They're then going to build up their characters. They're going to, you know, use the mana that they have to buy cards, better cards, and put them on their characters. And then eventually you're going to get to Magnavroth, and you're going to win or lose. I guess you can lose before you get to him, um, but that would be pretty bad, I guess. And the winner, you either all win together or you lose. The game comes with a nice insert. You're able to put the... A reference cards down there and then on top of those the weapons fit in on top of those we have the different orders and on top of those the characters and nice thumbs grips to get them out spots to put all the different uh, tokens and this places to put the cards not a ton of room in here but the insert does keep everything in very nicely the cards are okay I mean they're, they're decent quality the artwork on them like these I wish I know they show the seals, but you kind of got to look at them to see what they each do. You know, this is the seal of endurance, the seal of paralysis, the seal of haste. Um, but they all look the same. So there's that. The other cards look okay. I like the artwork on them. The symbology is pretty good. It's not hard to figure out what each card does. Um, the tokens themselves are nice and small tokens. The dice, though, are really good quality. I'm very impressed with these dice. I like dice a lot. And these dice are crisp, they're easy to see, and to put on your board. Um, the components for this game, there's a lot of cards. You have to sort everything out as time goes by. So you have to go by the top corner, and that's not too hard. But you just got to be make sure that you sort them out when the game is over, because you'll have the three decks mixed together. Component quality, pretty good. Okay, so a lot of things to talk about here. First of all, the level of difficulty here I think is very high. I would be very surprised if anyone wins this on their first try. For an example, Sam and I did a live playthrough of this game. You can go watch it and watch us get just mutilated. Um, as time goes by, the designer actually sent me some tips on things that you can do and ideas and things. And so I have not yet won the game, but I feel like it's winnable now. I feel like I've gotten close to it. There's also a solo mode in this game, so you can go through and play by yourself, as most cooperative games can be. The game, the artwork is fantastic. The gameplay itself makes sense. One of the things I really like about this game is that you're working together, but simultaneously, so we're all working, getting mana, talking, discussing. It's a good cooperative feel as we're all trying to get together and buy better cards and then fight off the monsters and like who can kill some monsters this turn because the monsters just keep piling up each location. More monsters show up. If you get too many monsters, they just do damage to everybody in excess of the monsters that would come. And the more monsters that come, the more damage you're doing and it can be problematic in that way. The game has some luck to it, obviously. You're rolling dice and putting them in columns, and sometimes you get these great cards, 
and you're just don't land on those cards. Now you can take away dice to move the card over, but if a card gives me, for example, two fire um, mana, and that's a fantastic thing, I want two fire mana, so I put that on the, on the board, and I roll a die and it lands one space away on a one fire mana, I can get rid of another die to move it over one and get two fire mana, but I'm giving up two dice to get that, so it doesn't really matter that much. And this is my biggest problem with Master's Trials. Now, first of all, I want to say I do like this game. I think it's a fine game, but I think it could have been great. As it is, I think it's merely good. But one of the problems is, is that the game progresses at a just super accelerated rate. You are fighting Magmaroth near, near, super quickly, and you, I don't feel like you get a chance to build up. Now, part of this is because of Dice City. In Dice City, you spend a long time building up, and after a while, you're like, yeah, this town is great. Well, look at this row. No matter what I roll, roll, I'm getting something great. Here, you don't have enough time to do that. And I think that's one of the, the minor flaws of the game is that I wish that there was more time to build up. I get that there's this cooperative nature, and you're fighting Magmaroth, and I don't know why they didn't make two bad guys. You could have put them on both sides of the big bad guy board, but... When you get to Magmaroth, you know, he's going to whoop up on you, and I would love to have some stuff. And I need to sit there, and I need to get rid of all these seals, and I need to get this equipment. And you never are going to feel like you've done enough. Now, I know that that is a good tenet of cooperative games, to never feel like you have enough to go fight the big bad guy. But I think in this case, it's it detracts from the game a little bit, because we want to have a little bit more. You want to feel like when you roll the dice, it matters. And bad luck can literally lose you the game here. Not just in that, but sometimes in the monsters that are drawn, you get a bunch of big monsters that you just can't defeat in one turn. And then they just lay waste to your boards with damage. And once you start losing in the Master's Trials, it, you ain't coming back. Okay, this is one where you kind of need to maintain this as time goes by. Again, not impossible. Although I would argue that not every game is winnable. Because sometimes you'll just get a run of bad luck. And again, I think that's a small detraction from the game. Now, you're saying at this point, Tom, it doesn't sound like you like the game. No, I do. I really like the board. I like the idea of rolling the dice. Again, that whole Dice Town concept. I love the beginning of the game, picking your characters. I wish there was more variety amongst the monsters, but the variety amongst the characters is really great, and they have a different feel to them. I like those neat little treasures you can get, which are pretty critical and could do a lot of cool things. Um, it's just that I look at it and see that it could have been so much more. You know, I had my mind was like, this is going to be an amazing game, and I played it. It's like, oh, it's a good game but it's not as good as I thought it would be. Um, great artwork. The whole system plays really well. It does not take a long time, so there's definitely that. I think some people are going to really enjoy it. Just realize when you get into it that it is not a simple um, game. It's not a game that the first time you'll play, you'll go, oh, wow, we almost won that. No. <laughs> and again, maybe you will be. Maybe you're much smarter than we were, but there's a lot of manipulation and trying to figure out and putting cards out and taking damage and I think even if you win you're going to feel like you did it by the skin of your teeth which is not a bad thing to come from a behind victory and defeat this stupid rock magma creature whoever he is will feel pretty good it's certainly unique and interesting though even though it's based on Dice City it definitely has a lot of changes from that original game so definitely one I think um while I think some people are not going to be fans of this game. I think others are going to really like how the whole system works together in a cooperative way. That's the Master's Trials. Dice Tower Judgment approved! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. Yeah.